creating magazine live layout for any screen using CSS regions. So this talk today will be about how to use CSS regions, a simple and powerful solution to create magazine layouts for the web using HTML technologies. Uh, after this talk we will understand why CSS regions is a technology that it's worth taking into account if you want to create such digital content using HTML for any screen using less work and, more important, without breaking the content. A few words about myself. I started in 2008 with Adobe and since then my work was focused mainly on WebKit. As you know, Adobe started to work and invest in HTML technologies and part of this effort, I contributed as an engineer to some of the Adobe efforts in this area like CSS regions, CSS exclusions and CSS shaders. Since 2011, I am one of the main contributors of CSS regions in uh, WebKit's rendering engine that powers, uh, among other browsers, Safari and uh, Chrome. Before going further with CSS regions, I think it's worth uh, taking a look at some of the characteristics of traditional print models. And in print, the layout techniques evolved and were constrained by the medium, in this case, paper, which has fixed dimensions, low interactivity, and one uh, orientation. Uh, when I think about prints, I'm mainly thinking about newspapers and magazine. For newspapers, uh, usually the content is uh, created, the articles are created so that they can be read quickly. And as a layout technique, we are using mostly a multi-column layout. For magazines, uh, we have beautiful content and uh, illustrations and they are printed on beautiful um, paper and we have um, complex layouts that help user guide and uh, read content over the pages. In case of magazines, like I said, we have multi-column layouts but more than in the newspapers we have an also an optimal column width that we have 12 to 15 uh, words per line that help, uh, uh, help user read better and also uh, minimize eye strain. Here is a typical magazine layout in which we have images, we have typography and we have also multi-column layout. That was yesterday, but as we can all testify, uh, publishing is transitioning from print to digital. And the reasons for this transition are plenty. Let's take a look at some of them. First, in the past years, we have a lot of mobile devices that are able to present digital content in a way that is appealing for the user. When I'm thinking of mobile devices, I'm thinking of smartphones, I'm thinking of tablets, I'm thinking of netbooks, I'm thinking of laptops, and so on. Second, the, the level of interaction with digital content is far superior on such digital devices than on print, because we have text that is enriched with audio, video, and beautiful graphics. Also, in digital content, user can search the information in a much easier way than in print. Last but not the least, the reading experience is better on digital devices because digital devices allow the user to follow links in the articles so that youth readers can understand the content better. And we also have the social integration so that on digital devices, the users are able to share information and share impressions about the articles much easier than on print. 
Digital is the future, but creating digital content is difficult. And the main difficulty is creating digital content for a lot of devices with different form factors and different orientation and different screen is difficult. Some of the publishers today have adapted their workflows from print to digital and what they have done is that they converted their workflows so that instead of one page they created an image. So for each page of the magazine they created an image uh, and this solution is nice, it looks very nice, but the process of creation has some problems. Um, it's not very handy, it's hard to adapt to last minute changes. Images does not, do not have the possibility of easy search for information. And also because the text inside the images does not have the ability to reflow, that means when you are targeting a tablet with different orientation like landscape and portrait, you have to alter the same page twice. So, there has to be a better way. And the first question that comes to my, to my mind is, can we use the HTML technologies to create digital magazines? For once, HTML can be uh, seen and it's supported on latest digital and mobile devices that have powerful processor, powerful graphic cards that are able to render this content. HTML coupled with CSS offer a flexible layout model and we can also use JavaScript to create fancy effects. Um, and also we have text, we have images, we have audio, we have video. All these we have in HTML and are standardized and supported by most of the browsers. Right, but creating magazine-like layouts using HTML stack is difficult. And it's difficult when you try to create a layout that has more than multi-column with two or three columns. The main difficulty is translating the concepts from print to digital. In print, the content is paginated, fits perfectly into, a, into the page, and the designer has complete control over the appearance of the content. As opposed to the print, the HTML is continuous. The HTML elements are rendered continuously from the top of the window to the bottom. <coughs> And the browser has and puts uh, scrolls, scroll bars when the content does not fit the viewport. In CSS, we have the problem of overflow. Um, we don't have many options to deal with overflow, we, to deal with the content that does not fit in a CSS box. We have for the overflowing content, we have uh, we can show scroll bars. We can hide the content and we can let the content be displayed, in which case the content may overlap with other content in the page. So, in order to create complex layouts using HTML, sometimes the developers and the designers resort to all kinds of hacks. And one of the most uh, used hacks is to mix semantic content with presentation content. But when you are doing this, it means you it's hard to reuse the same content because you already ornate it with CSS properties and presentation properties. Some of the designers that are creating fancy layouts are using JavaScript for layout. The problem with JavaScript layout is that JavaScript is slow on mobile devices and if you are trying to create a layout with JavaScript, with a JavaScript framework on mobile devices, then your layout will not be snappy and you will have problems when you transition from a portrait orientation to the landscape orientation. 
So, taking this, all this into account, I ask myself, how would I like a solution for the future digital pub publications to look like? So, for me, a nice solution would be to create the content once, and then using some CSS properties to let the browser automatically adjust and put the content into a page. Uh, that was the main idea for CSS regions. Adobe wanted to help the publishers in their transitioning from print to digital and the main idea for CSS region was what if instead of letting the browser render the content the normal way as a single flow we take the content, we take it out of document normal flow and we display it independently of document normal flow in special areas of the page we call regions. When talking about regions, there are two key concepts we should talk about. So, we have name flows and we have regions. What exactly is a name flow? Well, a name flow is a collection of HTML elements that are taken out of the document normal flow and they are rendered independently of the document normal flow. I must say that any HTML element can be collected into a name flow. And when an element is collected into a name flow, all of its children are also collected into the name flow. A document can have as many name flows as you like and the name flows are differentiated by their names. So, here is how a magazine layout using CSS regions looks like. And I think it's worth trying to see how we reach this design. Here is the initial article. We are trying to format using CSS regions techniques and if we take a look at the HTML code we see that it's nothing special, normal HTML tags. So here comes the interesting part. Using a CSS property, flow into, I managed to separate the content into the name flows and if you take a look we have the title name flow, we have the article name flow, and we have the illustration name flow and the quote. So, using a single CSS property, I managed to separate the initial content into different collections, name flows, that will be displayed independently of the document normal flow. Just collecting the content would not make very much sense unless we are displaying the content. So, here comes the second key concept of the CSS regions, the region itself. So, what exactly is a region? Well, a region is a CSS box that is used to display content from a main flow is instead of its original content. Being a CSS box means that the region can have any position in the document and can also have any size. You can have more than one region displaying content from the same name flow, in which case we can say that those regions are forming a region chain. If you think region chain is a very nice solution to the overflow problem, because once the HTML content overflows a region in the chain, then the next region in the chain will display the overflowing content. Let's step back and get to the same article. Uh, and here is how I want a layout with regions to look like. These are CSS boxes. And again, using another CSS property, flow from, I transform these boxes from normal boxes into regions that they can be used to display the content I already collected 
into the name flow. So, as you can see, the association, the link between the regions and the name flows is done by name. The regions are displaying content from the name flows with the same name. Let me show you a quick demo of how regions layout looks like. So, here is the same image you have seen in the browser. And if I resize the browser, you can see how the text reflows in the two regions on the bottom. Now, all right. This is another way of seeing how the regions and the name flows are interacting. So, here is the name flow and here is the regions positioned and we can think that the regions are acting as pages that paginate the name flow content. When discussing about the process of laying out with regions, the responsibility is split between the web designer and the browser. And the responsibility of the web designer is, in the first step, using flow into property, the web designer decides how the information is collected into the name flows. Then, in the second step, the web designer is positioning the regions on the page using flow from property and then in the third step is the responsibility of the browser to take the content from the name flow and put it into the regions. Now, I have explained so far how the region layout mechanism looks like, but the main goal is to see if we can use regions to create a layout model that adapts to any screen. So, because of that, we thought, what about we combine regions with media queries? As you know and heard also yesterday, media queries represent a very powerful mechanism to identify not only the type of media you are rendering, but also they can be used to inspect the physical characteristics of the devices and the browsers that render the content. So, revisiting the layout model, in this case with media queries, in the first step we collect the information into the name flows, then using media queries we detect the characteristics of the medium Let's say we detect if we are on the screen or on a tablet, we detect the orientation. And based on this, we can decide how to position the regions to display the information in a meaningful way for the user. What I would like you to see is that once we collected the information into the name flow, we just put the region and arrange the regions depending on the type of media. We do not touch further the content. So, here is the same magazine on a desktop browser, which has a big screen, plenty of space. Here is how the same article looks on a tablet. Yeah, we have both, orient both orientations, landscape and portrait. And here is how the, same, the second page of the article looks like. Alright, let's show more of a demo that I presented, that I created especially for this presentation. Now, here we have information for rendered us in a desktop browser. Now, assume I want to present the same information on a Zoom tablet which has a different form factor. You can see that the information is displayed on a, a smaller screen. I also have pagination here and if I want to present the information in portrait mode then the information is displayed differently. I can also display the information on a different form factor like iPad for instance. Also I have pagination here 
and if I want, I can display the same content in landscape mode. I also have the same content displayed differently for an iPhone. But here is the first page, and then I have a single region displaying the content of the article on the next pages. Also, here is how it may look like the article formatted for an iPhone on a portrait mode. And all of these are done using a combination of regions and media queries. Now, here is how a possible layout with regions and media queries would look like. Suppose I have three regions that are used to display the content and by default I want these three regions to take 30% of their container but in the case of screen media and when the height is bigger than the width I decide that I want only two regions to display the content and they should take up 50% of their container width. I would like also to talk to you about some advanced features of CSS regions and the first thing I want to talk about is the JavaScript interaction for regions. We have created a very powerful model, object model, for scripting and actually the regions are fully scriptable. You can, from JavaScript, uh, access the name flows we have region objects available in JavaScript. We can detect whether the content of a name flow fits inside a region chain so that you can create additional regions if you want that content to fit perfectly. And we also we have events that tell you when the layout of a name flow in regions changed in a way that may need to redesign the layout of the regions. The second thing I want to talk to you about is region styling. And region styling is a concept that allows you to render, the, the, to style the content differently depending on the region that the content flows into. So, in this case, I have one main flow and two regions. And what I would like to do is to create a different background color for the content in the first region than the content in the second region. What is interesting is that when you resize the browser and the content flows from one region to another, the content will have a different background depending on the region it is displayed into. Not all the CSS properties are available for region styling, we have paint properties like font and background color, but we also have layout properties like font size, font family, margins, layout. The third thing I want to talk to you about in regions is the interaction between regions and another idea introduced by Adobe, CSS exclusions. CSS exclusions allows you to create and define irregular shapes in your HTML pages and these two can be combined because the content that flows into regions can be determined to avoid such shapes. For instance, if you take a look, we have an irregular shape of the mountain and the content in the region is following that irregular content. Let me tell you a few words about the CSS region's evolution. In 2011, in May, Adobe proposed a CSS standard and also we came up with an implementation based on WebKit that we published for availability in the open. Today, the CSS region's um, standard is developed by Adobe and Microsoft and both providing editors for the draft 
And if you want to play with CSS regions, you have this possibility in WebKit nightly builds, and in Chrome, and in IE10. For tomorrow, the standard will remain open and developed and edited by Adobe and Microsoft. And we hope to have other browsers like Firefox and Safari and Opera introducing support for CSS regions. As we are approaching to the end, I want to emphasize that CSS regions do not define a mechanism to automatically create boxes into an HTML page. In order to flow content into regions, you must have these boxes available before you are flowing the content into the regions. For automatically creating boxes, Adobe is developing and proposing another specification like CSS page templates that fills exactly the same need. CSS regions being CSS boxes, you can imagine that you can combine CSS regions with other layouts, modern layouts methods like flexbox, multi-column layout. For instance, you can have regions arranged using flexbox and content flowing into those regions. Here is what I would like you to remember about CSS regions. So, first, CSS regions is a layout mechanism that allows you to create magazines on the web using HTML and, most important, using CSS properties, which means declarative layout. Because you can combine CSS regions very nice with media queries, we can say that CSS regions are also fit for a responsive design. And last but not the least, CSS regions have support in modern browsers like Chrome IE 10, which means that if you want to play with it, you should go to these modern browsers. So, responsive design, declarative layouts, and modern browsers. In my opinion, this is the future of layout on the web. You should try it, it's worth it. Uh, play with it, give us feedback. I strongly believe in it. So, if you want more information about CSS regions, as well as other initiatives from Adobe or demos, you can go to html.adobe.com and find more information, give us feedback and tell your opinion about our work. So, this is it. That's my presentation for today. I think we have time for questions. Uh, a little bit earlier, you mentioned uh, when in the context of responsive design, yeah. we've got three regions becoming two and a third one is hidden. Does this mechanism know not to flow the content into, into a region which has display, display none? Oh. No, I mean the content, it flows into the regions starting with the first region and then flows okay. into the second Supposing region. there is not enough space, there is more content than it fills in region one and region two. Theoretically, it should flow into region three. But yes. region three has display none. What happens with that content? Does it flow into the next page? Does, does it remain hidden? Well, if, if you are making the sizes of the regions fixed, like you specify for instance, let's say the first region has 200 pixels over 200 pixels and the same for the second region, then the content that overflows will not be displayed. But you have the possibility of making the regions uh, heights and width auto, in which case the last region can have all the content. So you do not have to place the content in the hidden region. 
Does this answer your question? Mm, not really, because the way the demo worked was more or less presented like uh, it appears like a slide, so like a, a, a string of pages, yeah. which physically are restricted to the size of the screen of the device you are viewing it on. Yes. So we have uh, displayed, we have the, the intro page, for example, and we have the content page below that displays the rest of the article. What happens? So if there is not enough content, the same template of region is repeated onto the yes. next page, right? Yes. And so content, instead of flowing into the region number three, flows again into the new page, into the, con into the previous two regions which are visible, no? In the case of the demo that I presented for the tablet, I specify, specifically create a design in which the first page has two regions and the second page has also two regions and these regions are linked and the content that does not fit on the first regions on the page continues on the second page. So this feeling mechanism is calculated on the entire document? More or less. I think it depends on what you want to, to create. For the first page I want two regions and I determine the size and for the second page I put also two regions and when the content does not fit in the first region it will fit in the next regions of the page. I guess I need to see more examples to understand it better. Yeah, go. Please take a look at the examples published on html.adobe.com. Thank you. Welcome. Yes, please. Uh, so you, you mentioned uh, Chrome, but it's, it's a flag in Chrome, right? It's not, it's not live Chrome yet. I mean, you, can, you can, by default, it's not enabled on Chrome, but you yeah. can enable on the flag. Okay. And also available on Android. I played with Android on Zoom. So also the regions are available there. Okay. Uh, with Chrome on Android, I mean with Chrome, right? Chrome, yes. Because interesting, one of the demos we presented, the one with Zoom, actually we tried on Android, on an Android tablet, we have uh, the four uh, old version on Android and we played it from there. Let's see, let's see how it works. And it worked very nice, especially when we changed the orientation. Right. And it was beautiful. I mean, for me that I create this technology, it was wow. That really works. Yeah, actually, did what you Exactly. Yeah, yeah I mean. It's a nice feeling. Exactly. It's, yeah. it's, it's a beautiful feeling. Uh, well, I had to have a look to CSS exclusions uh, documentation yeah. in the web, but I would like to know if uh, the way and how you define a CSS exclusion area. Uh, for instance, to show a uh, picture and text fitting with the, uh, let's say, border of the image. Is that a uh, declarative way to, to say exactly the, the well, <laughs> where to fit the content? Uh, how it's supposed to do that declaration of, uh, or how it's supposed to define that CSS exclusion? Well, there are several ways specified in the spec if you take a look at the CSS exclusion spec and one of the ways is you define a polygon that the content should avoid from the outside when laying out but also you can the spec tells you that you can use an image and based on a certain threshold for alpha channel you can define what is the polygon that the content should avoid and this may help you when you are having an image and you want the content to avoid that a certain pattern of that image. Does this answer your question? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you. For